Hi, I'm Kim and this is Homestead Witchery. You probably don't know me. I mean, you might know me through Facebook, through one of the groups I'm in. Or you might be here because you follow me on Instagram. Hi, either way. Hi, what's up? <laughs> I decided to call my channel Homestead Witchery because my husband and I have started a tiny homestead and I'm a witch. Our homestead, homestead consists of about an acre near Tucson, Arizona. So we're in the desert. It's basically sand, clay, and rocks. So when it rains, the ground turns, first it turns into a sludge and then it turns really hard. So it's hard to grow stuff here. Right now our main crop is choya and uh, cactus and rocks. I got a couple of things growing. <laughs> I'm looking at notes because I did this once before and it ended up to be 45 minutes long and I just would go off on these tangents. Just off. So hopefully I'll have my stuff together. So the reason we decided to homestead is because we want more control over our life in general. And part of that is having control over what we eat for health reasons and for ethical reasons. I don't want to eat the misery of something else, but it's hard to afford ethical meat. And we are meat eaters, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. So the best way for me to feel okay about eating meat is to raise it myself, because I know how I'm treating my animals. Right now we have chickens and quail. The chickens are for eggs. And we have six hens and a rooster. We're still figuring out names for them because they're pretty new. But we have about 20 quail. And they are mainly, they were supposed to be for eggs. But it turns out that we got about 15 out of 20 are males. So they're going to be eaten. And out of the five, maybe two or three have scissor beak. And that means their beaks cross, which means it's hard for them to eat. Because imagine if you're trying to eat. You can't peck something with your, with your mouth apart like that. So those are, we're probably going to butcher and eat all of them eventually, but I got my first quail egg today, which I'm pleased about because finally they're old enough to lay. The roos have been out there crowing like crazy for the past two weeks, and I've been waiting and waiting for the hens to catch up, and finally one of them did. So yay. Eventually we do. I want to get rabbits, and I would like to do that as soon as possible because this is when in the desert, then we would have them and be able to raise them, to breed them. Once it gets to be about May, it's going to be too hot and rabbits don't do well in heat. So we're probably going to have to butcher or move them inside. And we don't have room to move more than maybe a pair inside, so rabbits will probably be a seasonal thing like a garden. Eventually we do want goats. I don't know that I could eat a goat. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can butcher a chicken. I know I can butcher quail. I can probably butcher a rabbit. I'm not sure if I could butcher a goat. And part of my deal with myself is if I can't butcher it, I don't have any right eating it. And I wish more people would do that. Instead of getting all high and mighty about, oh, you're being cruel, but they eat factory farmed meat. They go to McDonald's. And they get chicken nuggets or they get a burger, so they're eating the misery of another animal, but I'm the one being wrong, because I'm doing it at home. How can you do that? It's your pet. What, am I going to treat it like crap so I can kill it easier? That's messed up. I'm not doing that. I do want to share recipes because I love cooking. I'm not very good at baking. Let's get that out of the way. I suck at baking. I'm trying to bake. <laughs> I am trying to get better. But we are also, usually we are low carb. And the way I do it is, at first I'm no carb for about a week, then I'm keto, and then I just go low carb. That's how I do it. You do whatever you want. You can eat whatever way you want. That's how I eat. I'm just telling you so you know that I probably won't do a lot of bacon recipes. Baking. I'll do bacon. <laughs> if I could learn to smoke bacon, that would be amazing. I don't know if I could kill a pig. That would be, I like animals. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. So eventually I do want pigs because if I can't kill a pig, then I don't get to eat pigs. I also want to show you guys what it's like to garden in a desert because it's different from anywhere else. 
I see all these homesteaders like Justin Rhodes and The Fit Farmer, Art and Brie, and they live in Owen oh, So The Land, who I love. That's one of my favorite t-shirts is the t-shirt that he made. But they have so much water all the time and I have to be so tight with it. So I'm gonna, it's, it's interesting for me to see how I'm gonna make this work. And yes, I do watch Re Weed em and Reap and the Green Dream Project. I watch them. And of course, Homesteadonomics. But anyway, I'm gonna take you out eventually and show you what our property looks like and show you how we're improving it, hopefully. And one thing I want to show is foraging, which is leads me to the witchcraft part. Because one of my first videos is that will be the easiest to make is a foraging for witchcraft supplies. My favorite things to do is make protection powder to give as gifts. And the way that I do it, part of the ingredients that I use are things from my property because when I make protection powder, I'm protecting my property. I'm just sharing with other people. So I'll be taking you outside to show you that. Uh, so with the witch part, what is a witch to me? Hey! If you heard some noises, that's because the dogs are wrestling and I had to shut them up a little bit. The way I define a witch is someone who does witchcraft. Now, Wicca is a religion. People sort of think that Wicca's, Wicca and witch are the same thing. You can be Wiccan and be a witch, but not all witches are Wiccan. Wicca is a religion. And there are different labels that people like to take or give to other people, like Green Witch or Kitchen Witch, Eclectic Witch. I'm just Witch with a little W. If I take any label, it's Wild Witch. And when I say that, I just sort of mean that I'm not going by any rules specifically. I kind of just do what I want. I do with what works for me, what I think is ethical and right. We can get into that conversation later too. <laughs> uh, so a witch is someone who does witchcraft. So what is witchcraft? My definition of witchcraft is, uh, is using intent to somehow move energy to get a desired result. Because your brain is just energy. I think that we do have the capability to use that energy to move we're all just electrons. Everything around us is just electrons <laughs> and protons and we're just cells and particles. I'm a bunch of bacteria and this is so woo and I know it's woo and I have this problem keeping it all together and I, wa I listen to Mysterious Universe. And one of the things that they say a lot is that Things like witchcraft don't work if there's not a tiny bit of doubt involved. So if you can prove it, it stops working. Or you can, if you can disprove it, then it didn't work anyway. I don't really feel okay having that doubt, but I feel like that's just the way it is. I have it. Sometimes it still works. Sometimes it doesn't. It works enough that I feel like it's actually a thing. That's something we can go into later. I'm not an expert by any means. I don't claim to be an expert. There are some things I know a lot about, like dog breeds. I used to be a dog groomer. Great. <laughs> but I am very aware of my ignorance, but I'm also very aware of everyone else's ignorance. And if somebody comes and tries to tell me something that's different from my experience, I'll listen. And if it, if I feel like they have enough proof, then maybe I'll change my beliefs and my views to what they're saying. But anyway, I'm not an expert in this and I don't, I'm not pretending like I can tell you how to become some mighty wizard or whatever. This is just me telling you about my life. 
One of the other things that I do is make jewelry. I have a shop called Clever Kim's Curios. And I made this. You can get this in my shop if you want. <laughs> So some of the things that I will do, uh, I'll probably show you how I make things. You know those cool overhead views you see on Instagram and they're making stuff and they saw out the pieces and it looks really cool. I'll probably do something like that if I can figure out how to do it. Anyway, some of the things that I plan on going over on the witchy end are, I'm gonna look, uh, probably no spells because the way I do spell work, it changes a lot as I do it. As I, if it's a different day, I might do it a different way. Kind of like cooking. But the technique that I use is different. I don't usually use rhyming words. I don't usually speak aloud. Usually thinking. I do a lot of what I call breath work. But things I will show you are like recipes. I'll show you how to make protection powder that is applicable to your life and I'll show you some of the ingredients that I use, where I get them, why I use those things, what they're for in this the spell. See, I feel weird saying spell. <laughs> I'm trying to get over that. I do want to go over things like appropriation, like the term smudging that I'm trying not to say it if I say if I if in <laughs> if I say it uh, hopefully I'll remember to correct myself and call it smoke cleansing. If I don't, call me out. Tell me to quit it because I'm not native. I'm not an indigenous. I don't have any of that in my ancestry as far as my two ancestry DNA tests go. So I'm trying to be respectful of other cultures. I'm trying to stick to mine. I will talk about the ethics of the things you are using, like Palo Santo is a big deal right now, White Sage is a big deal, where are you getting your crystals? Are little kids dying in mine so you can have a pretty amethyst cluster? Stuff like that. And since I live near Tucson, I do plan on going to the gem show and hopefully getting video of that and I am really hoping I can find some ethical suppliers so I can stock ethical crystals and stones in my shop because I see people all the time asking where can I find an ethical supplier of rose quartz or an amethyst or selenite whatever hopefully it'll be me so what do you want to know about do you want to see the property first do you want to see the chickens and quail first and see like my daily routine with them that's the first thing I do in the morning is take care of the chickens unless I really need caffeine in which I case I have caffeinated Kool-Aid because I don't want coffee and it's not really cool enough yet here to drink tea for me. Or do you want to see witchy things first like the recipe for protection powder or going out and showing you how I gather the ingredients for it to do some foraging. And I also have an outdoor altar that I'm going to be improving. Uh, that's one of the things I loved about this property is that I found it when I moved here There's like a little stone altar under this tree with another Standby altar over here. Let me know down below what you want me to cover first homestead stuff or which stuff and which specifically you want to look at and You can find me on Instagram at homestead witchery. You can also go to homesteadwitchery.com and that should take you to Instagram you can follow me on my main channel, uh, main channel, my main account on Instagram, which is Clever Kim's Curios, at Clever Kim's Curios. And basically, if you look up Clever Kim's Curios, that's like on Facebook or on Etsy, cleverkimscurios.com will take you to Etsy. And that's it. Let me know what you think, what you want, if you have opinions, if you have questions ask me because I love talking. I don't love talking. <laughs> but I do want to know what you think. Otherwise, what's the point of me doing this? So that's it. Bye.